Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some news on the paginated front along with some great community posts. Be sure to comment below if you can spot what's different in the shelf behind me, changing it up every week and would love to hear if you spotted it. Also head over to guyinacube.com slash courses. We just launched our first online course that we would love you to participate in. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Paul Turley's got a blog post looking at good and best practices from a Power BI project perspective. So just a lot of things to consider and think about if you are beginning a Power BI project. And he goes through and lists a lot of topics. This is a long blog post, I'm not gonna lie, but there's a lot of great stuff inside of this. Also towards the bottom of the blog post, he's got an overall checklist that you can use to just kind of go through and make sure that you've kind of covered your bases. So if you're working on a Power BI project and you're maybe not sure about what all to look at, check out this blog post. Links down below, along with links for all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Gerhard Bruckel's got a blog post looking at data virtualization. This is actually part two. Part one was back in August. I actually commented on it. The point of this blog post is really looking at how do I use direct query against multiple sources and then use that to bring everything together. Gerhardt points out that this is not what Power BI was designed to do, but it does actually allow you to do it. The comment I made on part one is be very careful about this from a performance perspective, because this is probably not gonna perform well if you've got a large amount of data. So what part two goes through is really looks at all right, well, what are the actual queries that are going back and forth? So he shows you those queries and what you actually see is we've got to put the data from the first query into the second query to actually get those results. So you're actually moving data from one data source to another. And if this is really large, you're in for a world of hurt. So that's why you wanna be very careful about this from a performance perspective and verify what you're doing if you are actually gonna go down this road. It is not something I personally recommend, but technically you can do it. Either way, great blog post, great stuff inside of it, go check it out. Reza Rad's got a blog post looking at how you can use the relative date slicer to actually track your start and end time and narrow in on a given range. What he shows you in the blog post is really using two relative date slicers, setting one for after and one for before, and then you can just narrow in the range. It's actually a pretty neat trick. Check out the blog post if this is something you struggle with or you're interested in. It's good stuff. Check it out down below. We got release candidate one for SQL Server Reporting Services 2019. There is some good stuff inside of this. So if you are using reporting services, definitely check it out to see what's available for you. One of the cool things that is in this release is support for hosting your catalog database in an Azure SQL managed instance. This is a great step before you could only really do it. It was only really supported on an on-premises instance of SQL Server, but now with SQL Server managed instances in Azure, you can actually deploy it to that as well. It also adds in support for pulling in data from a Power BI data set, and also the ability to use an Azure AD application proxy with your web portal. Some other cool stuff in this release candidate, check it out down below and check out release candidate one, play around with it and see if you like it. Power BI Paginate Reports got a very cool update. This is one I've been personally waiting for and bugging Chris Finlan a lot, but it is out. This is the ability to use URL parameters with a paginated report. Also, the key thing that comes with this is the ability to express the export format that you want. So maybe you want PDF, maybe you want Excel. That is now available for paginated reports inside of Power BI. This lights up a ton of possibilities and we will be doing a video to show how you can actually take advantage of this from a Power BI report, which is really the cool thing that comes with it. If you're using Power BI paginated reports or maybe you've been holding off until this feature was available, check it out. It is available now, go to town. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item in this week's roundup? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. I wanna know, let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.